What is the value of a man's life? You did not know the value of a man's life. If you had known the value of a man's life, you would have not have taken your own. When the note you left behind was found, the police were called and they went to look for your body. They found your body in the forest and they removed it from the tree on which it hung. The local police are mostly young men and it was more the weight of your deed than the weight of your body that was heavy for them to carry. You did not only take your own life, you took some life from all of those around you too. Your life is not just yours. Your life touched the lives of many others and in many ways that you did not realize. Even those who knew you only slightly were shocked at you taking your own life. The tears of those who knew you well told their sad story. The shocked faces of even those who were not so close to you told the sad story too. All wondered, if only I had known what I could have said or what I could have done to stop him doing this. Whether they knew you closely or not, all could feel the loss of you, even those who only said an occasional hello. Friends of friends came together to support each other in the grief at your loss. Some felt the loss of a close friend. Some felt the loss of a friendship that might have been. Some felt the loss of opportunities not offered or not asked. Even those who did not know you, but knew someone who did know you, were affected by your death. Suicide casts a long shadow on the lives of those left behind. I know a woman whose brother killed himself with a shotgun. First she saw the blood, then she found the mess that was his body. She has never got over the shock and is affected by it even now, decades later. How cruel of him to treat his sister that way. How cruel of you to treat those who cared about you this way. Perhaps you believe that life is cruel, but it was not life that so cruelly killed you. It was not life that planned and did this dark deed, it was you. I've heard of train drivers who had to quit their job or to be treated for shock and trauma after someone threw themselves in front of their train. A woman told me that she had nightmares for a long time after discovering that a friend she had talked to only a few days before had killed himself. She sadly lamented that he had been trying to contact her by phone, but she was away and did not get the message till it was too late. If you so wish to lose your life, then why did you not lose it in a meaningful way? You could have lost your life beautifully by giving yourself up to a noble cause. You would have been better to spend your last breath saying a kindly word to someone or on having it choked out of you by a cheap piece of plastic rope. It is done now, but what did you prove? All you proved is your life meant even less to you than it did to your worst enemies. Perhaps you thought, he'll be sorry when I'm gone. You were right, some are sorry you are gone. But so what, you're not around to know anything about it. Did you want them to feel bad? Well, you succeeded, some do feel bad. Now what? Are you already celebrating your victory, my friend? Or are you waiting till your body rots a bit more? What kind of victory harms the ones who care about you the most? or does nothing to, or even gladdens the ones who don't care about you at all. Did you kill yourself to teach someone a lesson? And what lesson would that be? Is it a good one? 
If no one knows the lesson, how can they learn it? And if it's not a good lesson, what was the point? You want them to feel guilty. I'll do my best to make sure they do not feel guilty. It was not them that killed you, it was you. There's no way that killing yourself gives you a claim to any moral high ground. Maybe you wanted to punish people who you feel did not care enough about you. You can only teach caring by example, not by punishing. How does you killing yourself make you a good example of caring? If you really wanted to teach people to care, then you should have stayed alive and shown them how it was done. You would have never have thought of yourself as unwanted or uncared for if you saw those who came to grieve your passing. You had spun down into a dark place, but it was really only a story in your head. Nobody else believed it. But your passing has passed. I can't do anything for you now. But maybe I can do something for those who are considering something similar. Perhaps some good can come of this. Maybe some man will hear this and turn away from destruction. Someone somewhere will choose life over death. He will find the will, the grit, the pig-headed stubbornness to go on. He'll say, Yes, life is hard as now, but I can handle it for today, and then we'll see. Or maybe someone will decide not to take it all so personally and realise that life is not really against them. You are thinking of ending your life. I'm speaking to you now. Rather than kill yourself, kill your bad habits of thinking. That which is malicious is never on your side. So don't trust any thought that goes against life, for that is malicious. Don't make plans to end your life. Make plans to end the way you have thought about your life and then plan to change the way you have lived it. A new life is always only a thought away. That is all, just a thought away. And then another thought, with a little bit more aliveness, and then another. The choice of life giving thoughts over life denying thoughts lead the way from despair to hope. Perhaps only a small hope at first. It's still a hope. Depression is a cluster of bad thoughts. Don't let an empty thought tell you that your life is empty. Don't let a meaningless thought tell you that your life has no meaning. Don't let a useless thought tell you that you are useless, for it's not true. Recognize such thoughts for what they are, empty, meaningless and useless. Put an end to those thoughts. Those thoughts deserve to die, not you. You kill such thoughts by not feeding them and by not fighting them. Fighting your thoughts just makes them stronger. You can unhook yourself from any thought by telling yourself, this is just a thought. That is all you need to do. Then the thought has no power over you. Life can take us into some deep, dark places. Life can be scary. We can even become scared of ourselves and what we might become. We cannot control the events of our lives, but we can learn to control our reactions to those events. We can begin to learn self-mastery, and that is the only thing which can even begin to give you mastery over your life. The only thing that nobody can take away from you is your character. Your character is the only thing you have which is truly yours. Everything else can be taken from you without notice. So notice how you can build your character as a good character is what creates a good life. Much of our experience in life comes from what we were born with 
and the circumstances we grew up in. How we allow those experiences to shape our character is entirely up to us. How will you play the hand that life has dealt you? Even a losing hand can be used to build a winning character with the right attitude. Life may seem the most against us when it is actually the most for us. Like a mother eagle pushing a fledgling out of the nest, life pushes you to your limits so that you discover that you can go beyond them. If someone hurts you, don't vow vengeance. Instead, vow to never cause that same pain to another. And that way you will learn to fly and not fall. Some seek death when they would be better to seek help. If they sought help, that is what they would have instead of death. There are 12 steps to recovery from addictions, 4 steps to forgiveness, and one step, the most important of all, is to ask for help. Many of us feel at times that we are not good enough and there is something wrong with us. Could it be that the only thing that is wrong with you is the belief that there's something wrong with you? Maybe there's nothing wrong with you. If you feel ashamed because you did something very foolish or completely stupid, this can be turned to good by using it to develop compassion and empathy. Next time you see someone else do something foolish, think of your common humanity. See if you can have some fellow feeling for them rather than judging and condemning them. In this way, you will find a freedom and a liberation that may well amaze you. Because as you free others from judgment and condemnation, you free yourself too. You will then not only help prevent the suffering of potential victims, but also the suffering of potential perpetrators too. In that way you can make amends in ways which are powerful and far-reaching. Consider the good you can do, not the wrongs you cannot undo. If the only option you have is to make amends in a very small way, this is much better than not making amends at all. Someone killing themselves does not make amends for any wrongs they did. It only increases the overall suffering in the world. Perhaps you're one of those unfortunates whose ex-partner is lying about them to the law. Your ex wants the kids and your money and just wants you out of the way. Don't be an accomplice in this. Don't let lies or injustice or appalling unfairness cause you to take your own life. In the face of such things, Teach integrity, dignity, and self-respect by being a living example of these things, no matter how others behave. If you're the idealistic or sensitive type, the ways of the world grates on you. But nothing is perfect, so the world can't be perfectly horrible all the time. We need to find whatever is good in life, where we can and when we can, and help make it grow. A better society will only happen when enough of those sensitive to a better way contribute to making it happen. Some are born with an inner calling to bring forward something new. The challenges in responding to an inner calling are much more difficult than just leading a normal life. Rather than face those challenges, some go into hiding in the basement of their house or the basement of their head. But as they discover how to express what is trying to emerge through them, many of their so-called personal problems just fade away. Maybe you feel that nobody understands you, but do you really understand yourself? Feeling understood feels good but so does making the effort to understand someone else. Perhaps you feel great pain, but how much of that pain is really necessary? Sometimes we can just drop pain by deciding to do exactly that. 
wanting others to change can be impossibly painful. Changing ourselves can still be painful, but at least it's possible. Some of us despair about ourselves and what we have become compared to how we would like to be. This inner conflict becomes a war where we use weapons of self-judgment and self-condemnation against ourselves. First thing to do is to end the war inside, declare peace, and become a friend to yourself. Then you'll have a much better chance of becoming a friend to someone else and living a good life. Some of us feel like a vegan born into a tribe of cannibals or like an early human born into a tribe of Neanderthals. We feel like we just don't fit in. We try to find ways to connect with others but something seems broken and it does not work. You may wonder how you can even begin to bridge the gap between how you experience the world and how you would like to experience it. But you're not as alone as you think you are. You just need to get outside of your tribe and outside of your own head. Know where your centre is, own it and claim it. Your centre is your capacity to take care of what's good in you and what is good in others, and your compassion for what is not so good. When you're in your centre, the storms of life do not affect you so much. Come back to your centre and you will know what to do next. You cannot be happy for long living in an unhappy body. Treat your body well and it will serve you well. Give your body friendly discipline like a well-loved pet. But don't spoil your body too much or it will run your life. What you appreciate, appreciate. The good within you and in others grows as you pay attention to it and appreciate it. The parts of you that you reject may be offering you a gift. Though for the gift to be useful, you might need to clean it up and straighten out a bit, but the gift is there. If you believe that the world owes you something, which usually means something good, then surely there must also be something good that you owe the world. What is it that you owe the world? What can you find in yourself to give? Or if you already give too much, what can you allow yourself to receive? Some people try to leave behind their real feelings and their real wants. They are trying to be someone else, living life as if it's an idea in their head. Maybe you try too hard to be good, but just feel empty inside. Doing good is best motivated by what you really feel, not by what you think you should feel. You may believe you have no friends, but maybe you have too many false friends. Have you made friends of cynicism, judgmentalism and despair? These can only bring you into your own personal hell, which keeps any real friends away. Judging other people harshly brings a sickly satisfaction, but it will make you seriously depressed and miserable. If you feed the monsters of judgmentalism and cynicism, sooner or later they will turn on you and try to destroy you. To kill those monsters, stop feeding them. Or even better, do one small act of kindness every waking hour. Even if that kindness is just a kindly thought, it still counts. You deserve to live. How do I know? Because you were born. Because you're alive. Because you're here. You emerge from life and life knows a lot more than you do. Do you know what that means? Of course you don't know what that means, because life is full of deep mystery. Life is not only full of deep mystery, it is also full of deep meaning. Life's mystery is always deeper than our ability to figure it out. And we only see life's meaning to the extent that we're truly innocent. If you want to see the meaning of your life, become more innocent. Innocence is a lot more than the opposite of guilt. Your original innocence was planted in you the day you were conceived. It remains within you, untainted and unaffected, for when you need it. 
You can turn to your original innocence when all else fails you, and it will carry you through. Yes, life gets sour sometimes. It happens to everyone. We just keep going, and it sorts itself out. It really is as simple as that sometimes. We don't know the answer, but we just keep going and something works out. Highly successful people in every field have often been through huge failures and major disasters, but they just kept going. This is the supposed big secret of success of most people, including very successful people. If you read their story, you realise they just kept going no matter how bad it got. That was it. That was the key and eventually, just keep going pays off. Perhaps you feel suicidal because you've been rejected, betrayed, divorced or dumped by someone special to you. Welcome to the club and it's a very big club. Right now there are millions or even tens of millions of men going through exactly the same thing. Hundreds of millions of men have been through it all already and have lived to tell the tale. Some can even laugh about it now. Yes, it might seem like a big thing right now, but soon enough you'll get over it and it won't seem so important after all. You know something odd? Some of the great men of history were clueless when it came to women, but they still had deeply worthwhile and meaningful lives. However, don't try to be a great man, just be your own man. That's what all those great men did anyway, and they served an honourable purpose by doing just that. The urge towards suicide is sometimes an urge towards vengeance. If you can accept how angry and resentful you feel, then you have the chance to channel it in positive ways. Once after a major betrayal by someone I trusted completely, I deliberately became obsessed with planting tree and plant seeds in some barren places not far from where I lived. In ways I don't fully understand, I somehow gave new life to myself as I gave the chance for new life on those barren plots of earth. Do you know how to get more courage to face life? You get more courage by encouraging yourself. When you encourage yourself, you make yourself more courageous. And don't be dismissive of those who have a good opinion of you and who try to encourage you. They may seem naive or foolish to you, but that is only because of the caustic opinions you hold about yourself. They are in fact speaking from that which is the very foundation of life. Some of us are revolted by the demands of the body and some can think of nothing else. Some regret the times they felt overwhelmed by desires which they wish they could control. Some try to escape from the body and from their feelings into their mind or into technology. Some are haunted by a sense of there being something wrong with them or even by a sense of sin. Some get themselves in all sorts of knots about life and demand to know why there's evil in the world. You may as well ask why there are heavy weights in a gymnasium. Such things exist for us to overcome them and to develop new strength by doing so. Is that easy? Of course not. What would be the point of a gymnasium where everything was easy? Everything has its place. Everything has its purpose. We just cannot see the purpose because we are too close to its outworking. Life is bigger and far more ancient than anything we can comprehend. We are not equipped to judge the deep processes of life. Who can really know the value of a man's life? Who can really know the value of your life? It is something beyond measure. And we cannot speak of that which is beyond measure. This is something to think about. It is impossible to put a value on your life because its value is beyond measure. That is why you don't know the value of your life. The value of our life is beyond your ability to measure and beyond anyone's ability to measure. However, your life is not beyond your ability to experience and to explore, and your life is unfolding. Let it unfold. Stick around and see what happens next. You might be pleasantly surprised. You might even be amazed. Take it from me, sooner or later life gets better. It occasionally gets worse before it gets better, but it does get better. 
You'll never be stuck for something worthwhile and interesting to do if you're trying to leave all you come across, person, place or situation, a little better than you found them. One last thing. Don't let what happens to you define who you are. Make how you handle what happens to you define who you are. Make it something good, something to be proud of and something meaningful. You have it in you, though you sometimes might need to dig a little to find it. Just keep digging, it's there, remember. Just keep going and maybe then you'll begin to discover the value of a man's life.